Hey, music community, Jeff here again. And yes, I think it's way over time. <laughs> Back in 2021, I did a series. I did like six or seven parts of my compact disc collection. Because even though here in the BC, we focus a lot on vinyl, I know a lot of people and a lot of people in the music community in general still focus on CDs. And I'm not saying that I don't because I still buy CDs quite often. But... The reason I jumped on the channel to begin with was just because I got back into vinyl and it was kind of like the running thing. But still, I have a lot of CDs. And as I mentioned in my previous video, I recently picked up a couple shelves, was able to get most of my uh, CDs out of, I say storage, they were in boxes in my in my other spare room. that uh, And I could get to them, but you know, have to go each, into each box and pull it out. And they weren't so readily available. And so it was a little tougher and more time consuming to go out and pull all that stuff together. So I did a series, got up to B, got up to the end of B, and I haven't done one since. So we're going to start now with C. Pretty much anything I've bought A through B since that time has been shown probably in individual videos. So I have to accumulate those rather than start back over. Picked up with C because I got some C shelves and I have at least my collection through S is now easily accessible at my hands. And so I thought, yeah, let's do this now because I know a lot of people out there still focus on CDs and I've had people ask me, would well, you own that on CD also? Because yes, in a lot of cases I own multiple versions mainly because I used to have the CD, still have the CD, got back into vinyl, wanted to get it on vinyl. So uh, yeah, there you go. And so that's why we got a, and some things are only still available on CD. So that's what we're showing here today. So this is for the CD crowd, and um, yeah, I will say that I tend to lean now towards buying things on vinyl first. So a lot of the CDs are going to be older stuff. I do have, like I say, some new ones, but for the most part, this is stuff I was buying prior to the vinyl days. I'm only going to go through CA because there's a good stack here, and I want to keep these videos short. So let's jump right into this Cacophony. That's the Marty Friedman and Jason Becker album. I do have this on vinyl. Nope, I have the other one on vinyl. I don't have this one on vinyl, so there you go. I only have this one on CD, so there you go. Great stuff. Uh, go off to Guitar Heroes, shredding it off with a great band here. So we got that. And then we've got the entire... Uh, these are probably not in the right order because I'm pulling them backwards. But this is the entire collection by Cage. Band you may not be as familiar with. California band. Um, Sean Peck, the singer, has done some stuff. He did the three tenors with... Uh, Ripper Owens and them, they, you know, and 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 he's done. Uh, he does Death. Uh, what's the name of that album? I've got I've got all their albums on vinyl. Got everything on vinyl for Cage that's available. Just power metal, Cal U.S. power metal type band that I fall in love with. Um, I went back and got their stuff. This is their older stuff. So these are the ones that uh, Astrology that I picked up after the fact but my discovery point not this one yet darker than black uh, but when i first discovered them was when they hit with hell destroyer <sighs> phenomenal album start to finish and then i went back and picked up their other stuff and as far as i know i think they're kind of still together even though sean does a lot of other projects like i said too check him out on youtube he's got a channel where he talks about comic books and music and stuff like that but he's big into collecting comic books and i love watching his stuff um, and anyway, and you'll find when they update things on Cage and other projects he did. He also, um, I think he was a short time he did uh, some work with, am I remembering correctly, with Warrior. don't think there's any recordings, but I s seem to think he might have stepped into that step for a while with those guys. If you don't know Hell Destroyer, though, check out this album. It was available on vinyl. I definitely have that. So, But uh, CD-wise, you probably can still get it. Um, Science of Annihilation. And then they went back and re-annihilated Science of Annihilation. Uh, probably remixed or I forget the exact story, but um, great stuff still. Just power metal, U.S. power metal, great stuff. Cans album. This, of course, is a singer from Hel uh, Hammerfall. Solo album he did. Doesn't stray too much from the Hammerfall model. Solo album. Great stuff. You know, love to have that on vinyl, but at this point, don't think it's available. Uh, we got here captain beyond now we're dipping back into the 70s this of course is the you know the original singer from deep purple wrong whatever to this absolute this album right here this uh first album classic 
phenomenal. Love it. I uh, didn't discover these guys until probably the 90s. I was way behind the times. A friend of mine who was big into them. So, so this is a reissue of that album. And I do have that on vinyl. Absolutely classic album. Efficiently Breathless. Second album is good. But the first is a classic. The first is just amazing. The second is pretty good. Third, different singer. I don't even have that one uh, in any format. I don't think. All right, and then we're jumping into uh, what? Well, we'll do this one first. He's coming by Les Carlson. Les Carl. Now, in the first series I did A through B, I was pulling them based on how Discogs does them. So they would put things in alphabetic order based on the first name. When I put them back on my shelves, I fix that and put them back to where I'd want to do it. So Les Carlson is C and not L. In the first series, I did like Bruce Dickinson was under B and not D. So I may end up repeating some of them because I'm going to fix that this time around. Les Carlson, C, not L. Uh, Les Carlson, vocalist for Bloodgood. Solo album after Michael Bloodgood passed away. Some of the involvement from some of the other guys in Bloodgood is still here. You got Oz Fox and Striper and people like that that helped out. Just a phenomenal album uh, that Les released like what, like maybe two years ago, 2022. So, absolutely phenomenal stuff. Love that. And it did come out on vinyl, and I do have that. And then they went back and released an album he did in 1971, uh, the way before, you know, Blood Good and all that stuff. And um, he was very much into stage plays and, 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 you know, musicals and things like that. So it kind of shows that side of him, less metal, more just the stuff that Les was recording in the 70s. 1971. Great stuff. He was tearing it up then. All right, and here's one, and this is funny. I'll show. You, I'll point this out. Rob Castle's Thunderfire. This is a. This album came out not terribly long ago. I can't read that. Um, somewhere in the past twenty years. Rob Castle's was a pretty big name back in the late seventies. Um, his first album had I forget. There were some some famous people. We'll see that in a minute. His this I should have shown that first. But his first couple albums had some some guest appearances, some great stuff. This is a later album. Grace of bluesy rock bluesy hard rock castle c-a-s-s-e-l-s -S -S. however the rob castles band c-a-s-t-l-e-s -S, is also found as a spelling again kind of a bluesy rock uh, lightly southern rock but more blues rock a little edgier than that uh, great stuff there love his stuff i'm friends with him on facebook too he's a cool guy and then you got this this was a more of an anthology released by the rob castles band that came out a few years ago on Girder Music, and it does have the first three albums, which these are the ones I cut my teeth on back in the 80s when I discovered him. And so, uh, yeah, Eve, Evening Pastoral, 1979, Kamikaze Christian, 1983, and Off the Wall, 1984. Off the Wall was where I discovered him, went back and, you know, really enjoyed the other two. But I believe it's Evening Pastoral that uh, I totally forget, but there are some, some I think, some guest appearances by some fairly well-known people at that point so rob castle has been tearing it up since then hadn't had any real new music recently but that that other album the first one uh thunderfire i think you know that's probably i think his newest all right let me flip these around because this is the end of it we have to have these in here right and again because of the alphabet uh these are under c and not d and that's my buddy david cassidy Love the Parch family. Love David Cassidy. So, have a handful of his stuff on vinyl. I have that one. That's his first album. Cherish. Um, Rock Me Baby. Yes. The, these are the two albums you see on vinyl all the time. So, I have those. These are all the CDs that were re... These are the, those two are the CDs that are re, were reissued, I believe. Yeah, Buddha. I believe back in 2000 and... Not 2000. They did all the Partridge Family stuff, which I have, which we'll get to in peas, I guess. And uh, they reissued all that, and they reissued some of his stuff. Uh, okay, this is one where they've got uh, Home is Where the Heart Is and Getting It in the Street, two-on-one uh, CD reissue. Grab that. Uh, I do have Home is Where the Heart Is on vinyl. I think I showed that a couple video months ago. Um, this one I've never seen uh, on vinyl, and it's just called David Cassidy. I don't think I've ever seen this may have been this is like the I think the 90s but it may be one that's not even available on vinyl but got that didn't you used to be David Cassidy another one 
of his later releases that I don't think ever did a vinyl reissue. And then Romance, you can see he was coming to a more pop sensibility, trying to bring it back. Got some frosted in his hair there, and it's got some danceable, upbeat type stuff. Whereas his other stuff was more uh, smooth, crooner type stuff, it seemed like. You know, with a slight pop. This one just seemed like it picked it up a little bit more. He got the his stylings with the suits and everything. It looked like he was, you know, going all out for that. And then later in life, he did Old, old Dog New Tricks. Uh, and so here he's back and that's kind of more recent and he's done some covers uh, I think I love you things like that so it's kind of like re-records of a bunch of his hits of that day so again most of these older ones I uh, have never been on vinyl so uh, and I do there's a couple albums I don't have on CD there's one that I have on vinyl I don't think I ever showed it because I got it maybe a month ago it's in my bin to clean because it was a little rough but there are quite a few in that middle time frame that I don't have on CD or vinyl. So that's it. CA, this will be part one of C's. I'll move on to part two. Maybe only two, three parts for this because there's not a ton of bands with C that I have at least. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I will see you later. Rock on and rock hard.